If there's a world here in a hundred years, one of the main reasons will be music. Greenwich Village is mostly a state of mind, but in the village, everybody's young inside. The village was where the whole rest of the world looked. Joni Mitchell. Bob Dylan. Carly Simon. Phil Oakes. And James Taylor. Leonard Cohen. Chris Christopherson. Pete Seeger. Harry Chapin. And the Mamas and the Papas. Judy Collins. We had chosen to be part of a socially relevant musical cultural experience, and we were giving it our best. The people who settle in the village usually are looking for something else. People that just came in with a guitar could mesmerize the whole audience with their stories, their songs, their narrative. There was also a thrust. It was the time where there was, there was a vacuum and we were filling the vacuum. There were no folk singers. Folk music had a, an emotional intensity. It had lyrical depth. It had uh, many musical textures. We was... did a, a hootenanny with the Smothers Brothers once. We were, you know, we were sort of in awe of the Smothers Brothers. And one of them, Tommy, said, you know, we're brothers, you're sisters. We're going to do something. And Carly and I got so excited. And he said, yeah, sexually. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that people give more and think more about good causes because of what happened in Greenwich Village. I think that was the great contribution of the music of the 60s and Greenwich Village in particular. But this sense of community that we had, or this real community of artists that we all shared, was very supportive and it, it worked. Plato says it's very dangerous allow, to allow the wrong kind of music in the Republic. However, there are now thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people making up songs in all corners of the world. And I'm more optimistic than I ever have been in all my life.